Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are just going to do some standard uh, regular old feeds. So, uh, yeah, right now we have the Gramstola Polker Peas. This is the first time he'll have been fed since molting last, 15 days ago. So, uh, we're going to get to see him nice and fresh and... From what I can see through that foggy plastic, he already looks great. Oh yeah. Looks fantastic. And of course, he always wants to come out. I am hoping he does not run from this feeder. So I'm going to give him a smallish one. Oh, oh, oh. He is trying to say hi or escape. And I have the wrong thing in the wrong hand. There we go. Using the lid. I don't know why he wants to climb all the time. He's not mature. So... I gotta learn to turn that off. Oh. He is getting out of view. That is my new ring light, but I cannot really use it right now as I'm dealing with a spider that keeps trying to escape on me. Doesn't move when I touch it, but when I go to find him, a buggy moves. All right, so let's see. Like I said, we'll give him a smallish one. Oh, went the wrong way. Don't tell me you can't feel that, dude. No way. Okay, so I really don't want to bolt out the side because we are on my coffee table. So, uh, let me see. Let me get him a regular size one. There. Oh, he missed it. It ran away. Let me help you. He's going to find it. Yep. Come on, he's right there. There you go. So he's looking great, and I didn't get no hairs kicked at me, so that's pretty cool too. Um, I do kind of expect him to start kicking hairs a little more. He never really has. I think he has once or twice. But, uh, I don't know. I feel like maybe as they get older, they kick more. But also, I've heard it's from molt to molt sometimes with these guys. Okay, I'm going to do that. I need to get him another hide in there. The last one molted, or molded, so I had to take it out. And then he molted, so I couldn't really mess with anything. I just had to leave him alone. So I will give him a new hide and water him later. Um, let's see. I think up next we might try the Ceratogyra Starlingi. Let's try getting you guys back. To the regular view here. Let me see where this bugger is. It has web to the top, which is cool, but at the same time, I like to prevent that. But at least it's not digging. There we go. Oop, and uh, 
I'm going to zoom you out so that you guys can see it. So yeah, that's the home that it has made. So that's looking pretty great. Let me get some of them old boluses out of there. I have not had any mold issues. This is also just straight cocoa fiber. I did not put my normal mixture in here. So let's throw a bug in there and see what happens to it. I'm sure it wants it. I don't think it would have came out of the hole that far if it didn't. Ooh, that was quick. All right, I'm glad it did not grab the tongs instead. Give a little a couple drops on the web. It's already a little moist in there, but I do like to give them fresh drops sometimes. I don't keep a water dish in with this one because it's already really humid. Um, my fossorials are you well. The more humid ones, I usually don't. So, like my C. Lividum, I don't have a water dish in that one. I don't have the water dish in the C. Darlingi. Um, I do have a water dish in the uh, Pelanobius muticus, which I'll get out right now. He is, it has finally decided to open up its burrow. Um, not that we'll, we'll get to see it, but um we'll attempt to feed so this enclosure was originally meant for the chromatopalmocyanea pubescens and i am actually going to get a little higher on this okay The light helps, but at the same time, you have to move it every time you move the camera. So <laughs> it's kind of a give take thing. And let's see if I can get the camera. There we go. So that is its little burrow inside that entire enclosure. And uh, I think it's an alright size enclosure actually for it. Now that um, it's established itself in there, the humidity staying right. Um, I have not had to miss this enclosure at all since I made it up. And that was maybe two months ago, a month and a half ago. It's still crazy moist inside. You can still see the moisture on top of it. I have refilled the water dish, so that may be helping. And uh, the water dish is still like half full every time I go to, you know, do my maintenance and everything on that. No mold under the water dish. And where did I put that thing? There it is. Okay. There's that. I wonder if he has a, a secondary entrance. I don't think it does. Hmm. I'll have to look at the extensive tunnels um, here soon, or after I'm done tonight. So let's see. Let's see if I can draw it out with a couple drops of water.
Okay. Let's try a red runner. If I can get the right size here real quick. There we go. Oh cool, we got some springtails running in there too. Yeah. And the worst angle to see oh he's nowhere even near there. So <laughs> he there's no chance he's coming out. So what I'm gonna do is drop that roach in there, let him run around, and he will find that deal on his own. He is going right for the hole though, so let's see. Did he go for the hole? Alright. No. Okay. I was gonna say if he goes towards the hole, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna see what happens real quick, but it is just gonna wander until it wanders in the wrong spot. Terranoculus marinus, that one molted, so it will not be getting fed today. We have another one that looks pretty fat and really dark. And I'm going to go ahead and hold off on feeding that one today. Let's see, we can do... Mm, why not? We'll do a... Parabuthus transvelicus. We'll do the big one and then we'll do a. Hmm. Oh, we'll feed this one, the Parabuthus transvelicus, and then we'll show you the big mama hot and tata hot and tata because I'm pretty sure that she's gravid again. And uh, hopefully I'll be getting some babies here again soon. Okay, so, as always with these scorpions, make sure you know where they are. <laughs> uh... Do your best to make sure they can't climb out of the enclosures. I have one that is able to, and I need to rehouse it badly. Um, let me go ahead and fix all this. These guys always look so much bigger on you know, on pictures, on my Instagram and stuff like that. And they're really so tiny. Let's see. Water. There we go. I just noticed that I had one of my uh, super worms pupate. So I should be getting another beetle out of that. Okay. Let's see. Try to get you in the kill zone. There we go. That should be good. And size appropriate feeder. That is the hardest part. Look a little chunky, so I won't give her as big as I usually do. Oh, come on, right in the water dish. Oh, does she not want it? Hmm. That noise is Rosie chewing on her deer antler. Oh, yeah, she wants it. Uh, she loves that thing, and she's chewing through it a lot faster than I thought she would. 
but that's all right. It's been keeping her busy for a good couple months. Uh, where did my heavy duty tongs go? I know I just had them. They're there. But yes, yeah, she is getting big, even though, like I said, they don't look as big. Um, I'm going to end up making her an enclosure that is like the Darlingis, just smaller, uh, with the same clay sand mixture. I want to try something newer. I want to put, obviously, the same, uh, well, it's not obvious because I haven't told you yet the same <laughs> clay sand base mixture for the bottom um, deep enough to where they can burrow in obviously and then a little bit of loose sand and then like some sphagnum peat moss stuff so like this is what that sphagnum peat moss looks like before I wet it up and put it inside uh, the cocoa fiber. Kind of looks like cow chips. <laughs> but that kind of has a nice texture look to it. Um, it'll hold a little bit of humo or, uh, humidity. I don't, I usually only maybe miss these guys once a week and barely even miss. I literally just like quick trigger squirt the wall but I'll fill up their water dishes um, twice a week so they can always have a drink but you know I don't know I've always misted mine as well so <laughs> that does it that just kind of stuck with me um, let's see I haven't seen any signs of mycosis so, that's always, you know, a good sign, obviously, if you have uh, animals that do not have humidity protection or <laughs> aren't adjusted to higher humidities, like this one. If these guys, hot and tata, hot and tatas, if they get too humid, they can develop mycosis and or mitosis or mycosis I keep forgetting oh look at that that is freaking fantastic she has already had her babies and I just did not know it looks like we have had a few deaths not many I'm gonna get this roach out of here um Oh, there's a lot down there, though. I don't even know. Yep, you're right on it, too. So, yay. You get to find out when I find out. All right, all right. So, that is pretty freaking awesome. So, I will go ahead and take you guys off the camera. Or, off the tripod for a second. I'll get a little bit of a closer look at these baby babies. Okay. Oh! Man, I'm not 30 yet, but I feel old as hell. Okay. So let's see. I don't know how well you can see this. Maybe I'll try to change this little lighting setting. So yeah, there's a bunch of babies right down there, and then it looks like they have already molted on her back into second in star, and uh, I will soon be separating them. It looks like they're already leaving. It does not look like she has eaten any of them, because I still see one dead one down there. Uh, yeah, you won't be able to see it, but it's right there. Um, but yeah, we got a bunch of babies, so yay, yay. Oh, man.
My floor squeaks too much. Okay, so I'll kind of just show you how I water these guys. I need to check all around there too to make sure exactly where these little babies are because one thing I learned from last time they are extremely hard to see but yeah I'm counting one two three maybe four deads five deads okay so five dead oh dang six seven dead man that's kind of sad but there's still so many right here and it's a large large clump of them they're like still a map right there and like I said she is not eating them so she must be doing alright her stress levels must be nice and low um, I swear I thought I got that roach out of there I did now. Oh. And it almost got loose in my house. But, like I was saying, we can, uh, we can go ahead and water this girl. And, let's see water here and I was yeah sorry I was getting a little sidetracked I was not expecting babies today <laughs> so overfill the water disc just a little bit and then uh, with these guys I just spray I just like squirt down a little bit of the corner not a lot uh, these actually hold humidity extremely well um, so they're probably going to be some of my more go-to for the humid terrestrials or younger fossorials. Well, yeah. So I don't have to do too much with the watering and it stays okay in there. Um, let's see, as I've said with the or as I said with the uh, Pelanobius muticus, another one that I have not watered since I made would be the, uh, or sprayed since I've made, is the Ceratogyrus darlingi enclosure. Ooh, I've got to stop kicking that. Um, so yeah, they hold the humidity very well. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think of any other ones that I can really do. I gotta take some pictures tonight. I've been neglecting my Instagram followers, so um, I don't want to get too many feeds out of the way. But uh, yeah, I think we're gonna go ahead and call this a video. Um, thanks for watching, everyone, all my subscribers. You're awesome. And glad that I got to share the excitement of uh, me having some new babies with you. So, um, yeah, we will see you next time.